friends, happy International Day of Friendship. This is a day where we think about the people in our lives that make us smile. And if you're lucky enough to have even one special friend, then that's something to celebrate. I had a story request today from another girl called Lucy, and she wants a story about meeting a very special friend indeed, a unicorn. As I'm sure you know, unicorns are very rare creatures. Few people have actually seen one. In fact, some people don't even think they exist at all. What you might not know is that unicorns don't like rude people, or naughty people, or mean people. So if they come across someone like that, they stay hidden. But if you're a kind person, or a thoughtful person, or a helpful person, well, then there's a good chance a unicorn might just say hello. This was how Lucy met her unicorn. Lucy was a very good girl, always asking questions and sharing her thoughts. But best of all, she had a kind heart. One day, she had been quietly playing outside after a shower of rain. While staring at the reflection of a rainbow in a puddle, a unicorn walked up beside her. Hi said the unicorn. Hello, replied Lucy, not showing any surprise, as if unicorns talked to her every day. That was an awfully big rain cloud that just went over. Are you wet? Do you want me to get you a towel? The unicorn had already decided that Lucy was a good girl, but this instant act of kindness just proved how right she had been. Oh, that's very sweet of you, said the unicorn. My name's Alwyn. Shall we be friends? As the wet days of spring gave way to the dry days of summer, Alwyn the unicorn and her new best friend Lucy spent much of their time together. Lucy showed Alwyn all her favorite toys, introduced her to the taste of melon slices and raisins, and invited her new friend to a sleepover in the tent in the garden. It was a tight squeeze, but they managed it. In return, Alwyn showed Lucy where the pixies played took her to see a talking cat and let her ride on her back as they raced a young dragon across moonlit fields. It wasn't long until they were both the very best of friends. One day, not long after breakfast, Alwyn and Lucy were counting butterflies and thinking about the day ahead. What would you like to do today, Lucy? Alwyn asked. Hmm, thought Lucy carefully. How about the playground? Would you like to go to the playground? Oh, I've never been to a playground before, said Alwyn. I'm not sure if, if any unicorn ever has. Maybe I'll be the first. Yay, said Lucy. You're going to love it. But when they arrived at the playground, they received a huge disappointment. Everywhere was covered in a dreadful mess. Drink cans, plastic cups, Food wrappers, snack packets, straws, bottles and boxes everywhere. Is it supposed to look like this? Alwyn asked. She was looking at the spilled remains of a half-eaten burger left on one of the swing seats. No, replied Lucy with a sniff as she wiped a tear from her eye. Somebody has made this awful mess. How selfish and mean. Well, I suppose we can't play here after all, said Alwyn. But that's not fair, said Lucy. All this mess means nobody can play here. I think I need to go home. Oh, said Alwyn. You're so sad you don't want to play anymore. Lucy shook her head. No, I'm going to get a sack and a pair of gloves so I can tidy all this up and people can't play here again. Alwyn the unicorn beamed at her best friend. That's why I love you so much, she said. You're always thinking of others. Come on, climb on my back. It will be quicker if you ride. Soon, they had collected a plastic sack and a pair of gardening gloves from Lucy's house. But instead of heading back to the playground, Alwyn carried Lucy towards the woods where the pixies played. Alwyn, you're going the wrong way, pointed out Lucy. No, I'm not, said Alwyn. I thought we could do with some help. First of all, they found the pixies. And when Alwyn explained the problem, they were all keen to help. You're a good girl for wanting to tidy up the playground, Lucy, said one of the pixies. 
Next, they called in on the talking cat. Oh, you really are quite extraordinary, confessed the cat when he heard Lucy's plan. Allow me to assist you. Finally, they found the little dragon curled up asleep in a farmer's barn. He listened very carefully to what Alwyn and Lucy had discovered and how Lucy had decided to clean it all up herself. Oh, how thoughtful of you, Lucy, said the dragon. I think I'll lend you a hand. And so it was that a little girl, a group of pixies, a talking cat, a little dragon, and of course, a unicorn, were soon hard at work cleaning up the playground. All of the wrappers and cartons and packets and cans and bottles and more went into the plastic sack. Lucy used her gloves, the pixies used their magic, the talking cat used his claws, and the little dragon used his wings. Alwyn the unicorn even managed to use her horn. And in no time at all, the playground was cleaned up and safe to play in once more. What should we do now? Lucy asked. Alwyn smiled. What we came here to do, she said. Let's play. Eventually though, it was time to go home. Lucy and Alwyn said goodbye to the pixies, the talking cat and the little dragon. And because Lucy was tired, Alwyn let her ride on her back once more. Oh, that was very good of them all to help us, wasn't it? Said Lucy. Alwyn couldn't help but smile. Of course it was, Lucy, but they only did it because of you. Me? Asked Lucy. Yes, you. When somebody does a good thing, it makes other people want to do a good thing too, explained Alwyn. Really? I didn't know that, said Lucy. And, said Alwyn, it's why I like you so much. So remember, Lucy wasn't thoughtful, kind and good just so she could meet a unicorn. She was already those things and was lucky enough that the unicorn saw her and wanted to be friends. Even if you're thoughtful, kind, and good, you still might not be lucky enough to meet a real unicorn. But you never know. You might. The end. So that you don't miss a single episode, just click that subscribe button.